Before we look through this report, I'd like to make it clear that Neville Chaplin, the man who wrote this report, was charged with raping boys. You can see here in this newspaper clipping, a pensioner has been charged with sexual assault and rape in relation to alleged incidents at Swanbourne House School in the 1980s, where Chaplin was a deputy headmaster and housemaster at the school. When I was at King's House School, Neville Chaplin was the headmaster at the school. That's the highest position in the school. So the man who is at the highest ranking position in King's House School, a school that sent me to an outward bound camp where I was sexually abused over a week in a very organised way, he's been charged with raping children. What's interesting is, when I reported the school to the police, they didn't mention this to me, just like they didn't mention to me that the camp where I was abused was under the directorship of Jimmy Savile. So, to return to this report, Neville Chaplin, charged with raping children, he has written about me whilst I was being sexually abused at King's House School in Richmond. He has written, The standard of his academic work is limited only by his behaviour. He appears intelligent. Some of his antics are becoming tiresome and disruptive. The question must be asked whether he needs stricter discipline or specialist help. NJH Chaplin. So, from a psychological perspective, this is quite interesting. The first sentence, the standard of his academic work is limited only by his behaviour. This applies to Neville Chaplin himself. I remember he was a maths teacher. He wrote textbooks in the classroom. He distributed his own textbooks, which we then had to work from. So he did produce academic work, which was limited only by his behaviour. I, I feel that Neville Chaplin's work in mathematics would have been much, much better had he not been raping children and covering up the rape of children at King's House School. The second line, he appears intelligent. This was also true of Neville Chaplin. He did appear intelligent. He was intelligent enough to create a reasonable veneer of normality. Of course, it's also fundamentally stupid. The next line, some of his antics are becoming tiresome and disruptive. Yes, this is also true of Neville Chaplin. His antics in abusing children and allowing children to be abused at the school did become extremely tiresome and disruptive. And then the final line in the report, the question must be asked whether he needs stricter discipline or specialist help. Personally, I believe that discipline is an incredibly stupid idea. Basically, the idea is if someone's hurt and confused and acting out, that you should hurt and confuse them more. However, specialist help, I do think Neville Chaplin could have done with specialist help. Someone needed to intervene in the school and understand why was this headmaster raping children? Why was he unable to empathise with children? What had happened to him that required that he repeat the abuse unconsciously? What happened in Neville Chaplin's childhood? This is why I think he's entirely correct in his final statement, which is that specialist help was required, but it wasn't required for me as a survivor of his abuse. It was required by him as someone who should have been protecting and looking after children not abusing them. So here we're looking at a science report, and to the best of my knowledge, this report was written by one of the men who transported us to the camp at Outward Bound in the north of England, where I was ritually abused over a week. I later discovered, as an adult, that the camp was under the directorship of Jimmy Savile and the patronage of Prince Philip, husband to the Queen, father to Prince Andrew, who we know rapes trafficked children, supplied by Jeffrey Epstein, and also father to Prince Charles, who is very close friends with Jimmy Savile. In this science report, this teacher has written, He often appears to be in a dream, but he nevertheless enjoys the lessons, and this examination result was satisfactory. I am therefore pleased with his progress. This teacher has written that I often appear to be in a dream. I mean, I was intensely dissociated because I'm being sexually abused at home. Another reason is that I'm being sexually abused at the school. And a third reason is that I was taken to a camp, an organised camp in which I was abused together with other children over a week. That is the reason why I appear to be in a dream. OK, so here we have an art report. This art teacher was not abusive. However, she participated in denying and covering up the abuse that other teachers were participating in. I can't believe that any teacher at this school didn't know what was being done to children or didn't have some sense of what was happening elsewhere in the school. However, I want to make clear that this teacher did not abuse me. She ran the art classes, which are in an attic space at the top of the school. And I think she might have actually been one of the few individuals in the school who showed any care or concern for any of the students. She writes, He shows considerable talent and intelligence, particularly in craft design technology. It is a pity he occasionally lapses into very silly behaviour. Again, 
I mean, it's kind, the compliment that I show intelligence and talent that's encouraging. This is how these reports probably should be written. You should write things that encourage and enthuse a child. However, the final part of this report is extremely problematic, and I think it happens in schools even today. She's written, it is a pity, it is a pity he occasionally lapses into very silly behaviour. What does this mean? When children exhibit behaviour that seems extreme, unusual, confusing, confrontational, this is very, very often because they're acting out an emotion they're feeling or an experience they've had. But this strange idea that we have in our societies that children are silly or children have tantrums, these are precisely the concepts that allow paedophiles who rape children to go unnoticed. Because when you attribute a child's behaviour to nothing, without examining what it might be that underlies that behaviour or why the child is distressed or why the child wants attention. Society likes to think that children aren't abused. Society covers up the abuse of children. We've talked about it in previous podcasts. So when I look at this last sentence in this report from this art teacher, I feel it simply encapsulates the ignorance of our entire society that we do not show any interest or many of us do not show any interest in the underlying cause of a child's behavior because very often what a child is indicating is their distress at being abused and we know it's incredibly common in our society i mean i can tell you that at the time this report was written i was being raped by my father at home i was being sexually abused by my mother at home i was also at a school where teachers were sexually abusing me and i had been sent to a camp where i'd been richly abused and my behavior in class it was a way of me trying to talk about what happened without having the words. You probably felt so angry and confused. Your whole world, basically, your home life, your school life, which was everything that you knew, was so unsafe, so unstable, was a threat of violence all the time. This is a completely normal way to express how crazy the world you were living in was, like how crazy these adults were around you. Yeah. It was. And it was also problematic because when students at the school behaved in ways that the teachers thought were disruptive, trying to express our pain at being abused, we would then be sent to something called a detention. And a detention is where you're kept after school, often for an hour or two hours. This happened to me very, very often. I was sent to detention. Very, very often it would happen once or twice, if not more a week, because of the way I was behaving in class. During detention, those same teachers who were sexually abusing the students during the day would then sexually abuse me in detention. This system ran throughout the UK and likely still does. This school, King's House School, ludicrous though it may be to accept this, still exists. It still exists. Its doors are still open. It still takes in students. Its headmaster was charged with raping boys. It sent many, many children to camps at which they were richly abused and nothing has been done this school's gates are still wide open. I wanted to finish by reading one more report from King's House School. And again, bear in mind that this report was written when I was around 11 years old. And the report says, he had an appalling term producing no recognisable results until I threatened to sack him. This had tangible benefits for the week after. Further comment is not possible as he forgot his music at his most recent appearance. Roy Stratford. This piano teacher, Roy Stratford, was sexually abusing me and other students at the school. And yet, somehow he's found it in his mind to concoct this report. I'm just going to go through it again. He has had an appalling term producing no recognisable results until I threatened to sack him. Okay, he seems to think I'm an employee of his. It's interesting, isn't it? So this abusive man... Roy Stratford, who I believe is still teaching music out there, he seems to think his students who he's sexually abusing are his employees and he can sack them. OK, the next sentence says, this had tangible benefits for the week after. Tangible benefits for the week after. I mean, what did that mean? I mean, uh, what are the tangible benefits that he could abuse me more extensively the week after because I was scared of him? The word tangible literally relates to feeling as well which is sickening because it just it, like in the context of what's happened to you yeah tangible benefits oh. i mean there you have a you literally have a man who is sexually abusing children in a school literally writing this had tangible benefits for the week after okay then the final part of the report reads 
Further comment is not possible as he forgot his music at his most recent appearance. Well, yeah, I did forget my music. I think I forgot my music whenever I was near this man, as in I lost myself because of the extent of the abuse. I think the real problem is Roy Stratford forgot his music, as in he forgot his integrity, he forgot his soul. And again, I read this report and Roy Stratford has actually written a report about himself, but he's accidentally put my name in his place. If we go back through the report, Roy Stratford has had an appalling term, producing no recognisable results. It's tragic, isn't it? It's tragic that those who sexually abuse children feel confident enough to write reports about them. You might get a sense from watching this video that to some degree, I have lost my anger towards these people. And that is one of the reasons why I'm able to speak out. However, I think it's terrifying that this school still exists. Well, you see their arrogance and you see how it works. The way that these people commit abuse is by disowning all the feelings that they are feeling. Every single word in all those reports has 100% to do with the abuser, nothing to do with you. All those feelings of shame, guilt, disgust belong to the abuser. I was essentially trapped in this school for three years. No one did anything to help me. No one spoke out for me. No one looked at these reports and thought, this is a bit fucking intense and creepy. No one did that. So the reason I'm making this video is because I want it to be known what schools like King's House do to students. Anyway, it's been around 30 years since I was at King's House School and I've decided it's time to write a report on them. And so here is my report on King's House School. The standard of King's House School's teaching is limited only by its epidemic of paedophilia. The school appears legitimate, but its antics are becoming tiresome and disruptive. The question must be asked whether King's House School needs stricter discipline or specialist help. The school's connection to Jimmy Savile, Outward Bound and the British establishment often distracts it in class. We recommend that the school be torn down and a memorial to all the children as sexually abused be put in its place. Phoenix and Aria. Just want to return to the report written by the piano teacher who was sexually abusing me. I remember when I finally left this school and I was free of his abuse, I did return to the piano. One of the pieces I wrote was about the sense of strength and freedom that I felt in leaving that place, in leaving King's House School, and in speaking out against what they did to me. And so here is a piano piece in memory of the kid I was and in memory of all the children who were hurt by this school. Thank you. 